Hello, book lovers and lovers of shirtless dudes. I'm Ben Bauer, and this is Shirtless Dudes Book Club. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret that I didn't even tell my guest, um, but I totally have a thing for gingers. Um, and, and my guest today is like super ginger, so I'm going to try super hard to like keep my hands to myself, but I make no promises. I make no promises. He will be shirtless and ginger. Um, <laughs> uh, but my guest today, uh, you may have seen him recently on Modern Family and Getting On, uh, and he's also currently doing a play that um, we're going to talk about a little bit, because he's very excited about it, and he, get, he gets real sexy when he gets excited. Um, whatever. Uh, don't we all? But uh, without further ado, my friend Casey Mahaffey! Yeah! <laughs> Hello! Yeah. Hello! Oh. That's, uh, that was nice. Hi. That was nice. Um, we're gonna scoot that way just a hair. This way? Perfect. This is great. Bueno. Casey, hi! 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 Oh my god, thank you so much for joining Isn't he pretty? Stop. Oh, god. So, um, tell us about the play you're doing right now. So, the play I'm doing is actually, um, a George Bernard Shaw play. Oh. Extra credit points for those of you who know that is. <laughs> um, it was written in 1897. Six or seven. It's called You Never Can Tell. It's an old British comedy. And I play a dentist, which is, there's very little sexier than dentistry. Very little. So, um, but it's really, it's a wonderful uh, play. It's really exciting. Um, it's, it's all based in language, which, I mean, come on, like circuitous language and romanticism. That's big pretty words. sexy, big, Ooh. fat Ooh. words. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm, I'm planning on seeing it too. Yes, I'm very I excited. hope so. It's really fun. Um, uh, you know what, before we, before we get to talking about the book, yes. you know what we need? What? The book. Okay. Where's right here, right here. I, I, I prepped it for you. Oh. See? Oh, I'm God. a good assistant. You're doing a great job. Thank You're you. You're doing a great job. I'm falling apart. Um, as you may know, we are going to be talking about Ready Player One by <laughs> Ernest Cline. But before we get into that, there's, there's a little work that we have to do beforehand. What's that? I believe it's this kind of work. This kind of work. Oh. Like that? Lay off. Whatever. Lay off, my happy. Can't keep my hands to myself. Mm. Mm. Ah. Uh, that was too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the book that we're going to be talking about today, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Now, Casey, yes. uh, when I have guests on, I like to ask them four questions. The first question being, for the folks at home who might not have read it, uh, can you give us a brief synopsis of yes. what goes on? in the book. So, Ready Player One, uh, the year is uh, 2044, and it's a post-apocalyptic America. Uh, the novel the takes- The worst kind of America. The worst kind of America. <laughs> the worst Trump America. Whoops, yeah. sorry. Ooh. But not really. Um, so, uh, so, it basically, the novel um, vacillates between two worlds. Reality, like this, uh -huh. and then virtual reality. Basically, this world has been created called the Oasis, which is like the internet on steroids. So people can plug in with their goggles and their suits, and all of a sudden they're magically transported out of their dystopian, poverty-stricken, pollution-ridden, starvation-ridden world of America into like beauty. And but what's real and what isn't is part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so what happens is this place, the Oasis, this virtual world, was created by a man named James Halliday who's sort of like a Bill Gatesian type recluse figure, right? So he's created this entire world and he, at the top of the novel, he dies. And he leaves in his will like $800 billion or something. Uh, whatever, a, lot. a lot of money, a lot of money. like a billion, trillion, million dollars. So many dollars. Um, uh, he leaves it for anyone who can solve this riddle that he says in his will that he planted in the oasis. So you have to hunt through this virtual landscape to try to pass three riddles, solve three riddles, in order to get the prize, which is called the Easter egg, they call it, to, in order to get that Easter egg prize and get $800 billion. But it's not just $800 billion. They also become like the, the head of The Oasis. heir apparent yeah. to Oasis. So he's actually not, uh, it's sort of like looking for, they compare it to, as we said, Willy Wonka and the mm -hmm. Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. It's like, not only is it a contest, but he's also looking for the next heir to take over the throne of CEO of this company that runs the Oasis. Bum, 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 bum. 
Uh, fantastic. Question number two. Yes. Uh, why did you decide to bring this book in to Shirtless Dudes Book Club? Okay, well I brought this book in because um, I could have brought in something like Anna Karenina War or and War and Peace. And I think that a life is about balance. Those are wonderful things as well. But I brought in this one because it's a page turner. Uh, it's super exciting. It's super fast paced. That's the first part of it. The second part is that James Halliday, this figure, right, this guy who dies, he, this character had an obsession with 80s pop culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm a child of the 80s. I grew up. Do you see the shade? It's like so much shade. I am a child of He's the like, 80s. He's like, wow, I'm not. <laughs> I am. I'm a child of the 80s. And I grew up with this. And so in, in order to solve all these riddles, these puzzles that are in the Oasis, you have to have vast, ex extensive knowledge of like John Hughes movies, like Pretty in Pink or Sixteen Candles or anything starring Molly Ringwald ever. The entire filmography, the canon. The canon. <laughs> that is Molly Ringwald. She would be so happy to, to hear that we <laughs> call her body of work a canon. Um, and so it's stuff like that, um, or like like you have to solve a riddle like by knowing a fact about the Goonies, or you know a mm. different uh, a Blondie song that came out in 1981 or whatever it is. And so coming up with that, those one hit wonders in British Invasion and those John Hughes movies, and growing up with Michael J. Fox as like a god. Um, that's really been an exciting component of the novel. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite parts of it is one of these challenges that uh, our main character has to go through in order to, you know, get the next key to take him to the next challenge is he has to, th there's like a simulation of one of James Halliday's favorite movies. And so he basically is in the movie and he has to say all the lines. And th they do that a couple times actually. Yeah. And, and I, it's just really fun. It's just really fun to like watch yeah. these characters who are so far removed from this time period, uh, but with such an extensive knowledge, like go through these challenges. Right. It's really great. It's sort of like being locked into one of those rooms. I just did one, not, not a panic room. Like the escape the room? The escape room. It's sort of like, the novel's like an escape room where all the answers are hidden in 80s pop culture references. Oh wow, that's actually incredibly, that's spot on. That is spot on. Thank That's you. good. It's like you read the book or something. I mean, no. <laughs> uh, great. Question number three. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, moment or passage or event in the book? Yeah, I think that my favorite event in the book would be, uh, okay, so we are all, in real life, this is Ben and this is Casey, right? But in the Oasis, Casey could be a seven foot four sumo wrestling panda bear or a four year old. <laughs> Or a four-year-old girl with pigtails. Your avatar, for lack of a better word, or, or how you represent yourself in the Oasis and how other people see you can be whatever you want it to be. So the main character, Wade, as he's going through trying to solve all these riddles, he's this 18-year-old, you know, zitty-faced, kind of overweight, underdeveloped, kind of scrawny kid. Uh, he... Um, he uh, has this avatar of this sort of like good looking like guy who's swarthy. swarthy and like beats all the games and he's kind of sexy. Well, his best friend is named H. And so he and H, H, right? H. Yeah, they go through this novel trying to like to, to solve these riddles together. Well, in reality, reality, toward the end of the novel, when H and Wade meet, they find out that they are very different than what they thought they were. Uh, based on their avatars. And I thought that's a really fun concept and fun moment. Yeah, I, I, I think that whole thing, just, just about like how we perceive ourselves, how we want other people to perceive us, is very interesting, especially in this kind of world where you can you can show up however you want to. Right. It's, it's really, really interesting. But then it was also kind of cute, because like when, when our hero and H come face to face for the first time, like, yes, it's weird because they're not at all what they expected the other to be, but there, but there is that recognition that like, there is that, um, like they knew each other. Yeah. And they're and like, look, these like are the rules and we both agreed to play by the rules yeah, yeah, yeah. and that this is what it is, but they both, the wonderful thing, because obviously it serves as sort of a metaphor a little bit with a like bit. projection and how we wish to appear in the world, that they love each other anyway as friends, even though, I mean, they could have taken the path. Oh, you lied to me. You didn't look like the way that you, yeah, you yeah, said yeah. you would, or that your avatar looks. But instead, they just—they're sort of—they're tickled by it. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. Um, and then also near the end, there's something. There's a little passage that I really, really loved. Um, after 
After everything goes down, I'm just going to put it that way, I'm not going to tell you what goes down, but everything goes down, and uh, Halliday uh, kind of comes back from the dead. I mean, it, his avatar comes yes. back, uh, just for a moment, just to impart some uh, uh, final wisdom. Um, he says, uh, I created the Oasis because I never felt at home in the real world. I didn't know how to connect with the people there. I was afraid for all of my life, right up until I knew it was ending. That was when I realized, as, as terrifying and painful as reality can be, it's also the only place where you can find true happiness, because reality is real. And uh, I just thought that was really nice, and kind of ties in with the whole, the whole bit about like putting ourselves out there, and you know, yes, they, they could be whoever they wanted to be in this virtual world, but you know, was that real? Were they risking anything? Um, to be there. Yeah. Uh, so it just, it, I don't know, it makes you think. It really does. And it says a lot about like today we have social media, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have all these things that we can sort of image craft our way through mm. and present the best of all possible scenarios to people. Look at me hiking and running. Look at me with my eight, my eight pack. Look at me with this, this, and that. And it sort of questions like what you're putting out there, the imagery you're putting out there, how much of it is real and how much of it is manifested, you know? Yeah. And what's really important. Mm, can't find that the second one? Where'd it go? You, we marked There two. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Victory. And uh, going off of what he just said, there's this really interesting part in the book where um, w once your, your avatar reaches a certain level, they can basically have like a live feed of themselves all the time. And they get their live feed to do with whatever they want. They can put anything they want to out there. And uh, so I looked fetish videos broadcast out of Eastern Europe amateur porn featuring deviant soccer moms in Minnesota, you name it. Every <laughs> flavor of weirdness the human psyche could cook up was being filmed and broadcast online. The vast wasteland of television programming had finally reached its zenith, and the average person was no longer limited to 15 minutes of fame. Right. Now everyone could be on TV every second of every day, whether or not anyone was watching. <laughs> So everyone became their own star. Everyone became, in their own minds, yeah. became their own star. And Which is not unlike Hollywood, where we are today. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on to question number four. Okay. This is, the, this is the final question. Are you ready? Here we go. This is your own little challenge. Find this Easter egg. Yo. Bam. Um, question number four. Uh, for the folks watching at home, you have... 30 seconds, I'm not counting, you have 30 seconds to convince anyone watching why they should read Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Give us your best elevator pitch and go. Okay, here we go. So we got springtime and summertime coming up, right? It's going to be hot weather, you're going to be by the pool, you're going to be going to the beach, hanging out on vacation with your family, whatever. You're going to need a page-turning, fast-paced, motor-driven book that is fun to read, that's exciting, um, kind of like a Da Vinci Code sort of engine behind it and this is it this is super fun everyone knows these movies and songs from the 80s and 90s these pop culture references uh, uh it's really exciting it's like i said it's a totally exciting um uh, a world to envelop yourself around and also steven spielberg has just signed on to direct the film so the movie of this will be coming out probably around 2018 maybe late 2017 so i think it'd be a good idea to read it now before the movie comes out I, that's always, I always encourage that. Yes. Awesome. Well, Casey, thank you so much. much. Of course. Oh, God. Yeah. This is too much. It's going to last oh, a little God, longer than it should. really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Well, uh, again, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you had fun. Yeah. I had fun. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys tune in next week. Ready, Ready. player one. Bye. <laughs>